In this video I'm going to go through what settings I have in my version of Photoshop based on the tools that I use most often for making printables and the settings and the tools that I recommend you have turned on when you're making printables. So if I go to File New, the first thing that you'll notice when you go through the tutorials in this course is that I usually leave these as the default in Photoshop. Um, if you're making something that you know is going to be printed, like you're not just printing it on your home printer, you're going and taking it to a proper printer, you would choose CMYK color mode. Um, however, I just use RGB mode for my printables and they print out fine on my home printer. Um, so it's really up to you. If you're not sure which color version to use, go with CMYK. And I always leave it at 300 resolution and then I always leave these pixels and 8-bit and whatever other Photoshop preset, um, preset selections. If you are making printables at a different page size than what is offered in the preset, for example A5, you enter in your dimensions and then you hit save preset and it will appear in here to use um, for future printables so you don't have to waste time re-entering in your dimensions from this menu um, when it pops up when you make a new one. And hit OK. Okay, so as you can see from my Photoshop, I have a sidebar over here. I have rulers turned on. I've got a few things pinned over here. So let's just go through what a few of these are. So we've got the move tool, we've got the marquee tool, which I use for selecting things and then aligning. Um, you've got your crop tool, your color picker, like your eyedropper tool. If you are not seeing that, make sure you right click and it will bring up the eyedropper. So when you see this little downward pointing arrow, that means there is a secondary, like a flyout menu. So if you right click, it'll bring that out. So if you're seeing that and you're going, where's my paint bucket? If you right click, it's there. It's just like hidden because there's so many tools it would be a menu out to like here if Photoshop showed them all at once. Especially for the shape tool as well, there's heaps in that secondary menu. Um, okay, and then we've got the color picker. So uh, how this works is this color up the top here is, they call it the foreground color. Basically that's like your current selection. So if you go to your paint bucket and you left click, you'll see that this is my foreground color and it's, see how that thing popped up? Foreground color and then up here I've got foreground color. So if you wanna apply a color, make sure this is the one that's showing because if I have it set up like this and left click, it's going to fill it with the white. So make sure top color is the color you want and this one could be like a save swatch that you're using or because people tend to use white and black all the time, that's what I usually have um, like as my background here. Okay, so going through um, like my setup, I have my rulers turned on. So there's various keyboard shortcuts in Photoshop. I don't know them all. I just use uh, know the ones that I use often. So Control and R will turn them off and on. It's up to you whether you use them or not. Um, they can be helpful to give you an indication, um, especially if you've not sketched a printable out on paper and measured it up. So I usually do a sketch like that and I go, oh, okay, on paper. Um, actually it makes me realize I only want this box to be like two inches wide. If you are not someone that wants to do that on paper, you get a visual idea of doing that on here with these rulers. And if you left click and drag down, it will also create um, like a guide. So this won't show when you print. It's just like a thing that you can use to help you align things if you know you're gonna have a straight row or for your page margins. So making sure you leave a little bit on the edge for printing, it'll work on the left too. So you know, okay, this is where I, my design cannot extend beyond because it's going to get cut off when I print it. So that's a um, good way to use those. The other thing that I recommend you do is go to view and then show and then grid. That can be very helpful when making printables as well. Um, up to you whether you use it or not. I find it a bit busy to use because um, there's like so many boxes and then you've got your design on top. I find it a little bit distracting. However, some people do like the grid because um, it helps with aligning things and keeping like an even spacing because it's already like there and measured out for you. So up to you if you want to use that or not. That was under view, show and then grid. If something is ticked, that means it's like activated. So if you don't tick it, then it won't show. Now, um, the other handy tool that you must turn on, it's like one of my all time favorites, is the snap tool. So if you're making something, make sure you've got all these ticked. If you're making something, it will automatically pull your mouse and like help you align things. So if I just make a um, square, now let's say that I wanted to move this to 
um, like in line with my guide there. You probably can't see it, but it sort of like snaps. See how it like sort of catches, um, which is another reason why I love it. And it'll like catch on the edge of your page as well. So you don't like extend off it. You can feel it like click, not like click, but I guess like latch onto it. So that's quite a handy tool, which I always have turned on no matter what I'm making. Definitely turn those on, especially if you're doing patterns as well. The snap tool is really good for that. Um, I always have these like guides, smart guides, all that stuff turned on. Um, what else? I just use standard screen mode um, in the window menu. You can bring out your like your flyout menus, which appear over here. So let's say that I wanted um, the color menu. So see how that has now disappeared because I don't have it turned on. So when you tick it, it will then appear as like your save favorites. Um, don't underestimate how much time you will save when you put it in your favorites. If you don't have it ticked, then like it's not it's not readily available. So if I'm designing something and like I want to change the color, so I want to go to like my swatches menu. Oh, it's right there. That was super quick and easy. If you don't have that on, it's going to take you longer because you have to go like the long way. Um, you have to go, you know, fill color. I've got to click here and then I've got my swatches. It's just way easier if you've got them turned on for your favorites, especially um, the character menu. So I've got that over here. So when you click on it, it'll like pop out over here. If you left click and drag, you see how it goes blue. It'll then save it. If it wants to, there we go. It'll then save it in this like secondary sidebar here. Now you can move this if you don't want it there. You can do it like that. I actually hate that because now I can't really see my layers. I like to have it pinned to the side over here. If it wants to pin it back again, no, it doesn't. So I'll just expand it out um, because then I can actually see all my layers when it is big. Um, the other thing that I should show you. So I've got the characters menu where you do your text. So you can change your font style, your um, type, like, you know, bold, italic, just like in Word. Then your um, size of your font, this will be the line spacing. So the amount of gap between um, lines. And then, so like if you type, let's go like, hello, hello. See how that's huge because it's set to a big number. So if you press control A, that's another tip. It'll highlight all of your text and then you can reduce that down. So it's closer together. Maybe not that close. Um, that looks better. The other thing that you can do is change the amount of spacing between your letters. So see how that's a bit more gappy. I'll make it really pronounced so you can really see what I mean. See how that's super gappy. And I'll put an even spacing between all your letters, which can be handy. Some fonts, you do need to do that because they can get a bit bunched together. You can change the color by using the color picker tool. And I love that it live updates. You can see exactly what it looks like before you hit OK and accept the change. That's just your shortcuts for your like styling for your text. Um, there's the paragraph where you can, you know, left or center align your text, all that stuff. Again, just like in Word. Um, what else do I use in terms of making printables? Um, I've gone through that one. Oh, to zoom in and out, I use control and the plus sign and then the minus sign. I use that quite often. You don't really need to use the other stuff because that is mainly for making patterns. Obviously, I've got my layers menu over here where I can see all my design elements. Um, within that, there's the opacity tool if you want to make um, like multi-tone, like ombre, ombre, however you pronounce it. That always looks cute on a printable. Um, and image canvas size. So if you wanted to resize, then you can go like inches and enter it in. So let's say eight and a half by 11. Note that some things may get cut off. Hit proceed. See how that box is now doesn't have a gap around it and that's off the edge of the page because it shrunk. See what I mean? So you can adjust your canvas size that way. If you're going to do that, you'll just need to um, shrink your design around to proportionally fit it. Um, what else? I'll duplicate. So if I'm making a printable and what I like to do is have like my master document, which has um, different design elements, so things like page borders. I have all those created and keep them in one like master Photoshop file. Then I can just open that up, right click, let's say this was one of them, go duplicate layer and then send it to the design I'm currently working on. In this case, I don't have one, but it would appear here with the name of it. So let's go new and see how it's now got it on this new design that's copied it and it's still here on this one as well. So that is a very handy tool to use. The duplicate is right click duplicate. 
um, if I'm making duplicates within the layers menu, like of the same design, just hit Control J. Obviously, delete will delete it. Um, what else do I do? Uh, right click, create clipping mask. So if you had a pattern that you wanted to add to a design element of your design, I'll just do this for the, um, actually, no, I will use a digital paper just to show you. So if we left click and drag that in. So let's say I wanted this to just go on the box on one part of my design only. Make sure that you drag it down to its position directly above the layer you want to clip it to right click create clipping mask and then see how it will only appear over what area you've created you can do this for any shape um, that you like by the way you can also do it for text as well so you can clip the pattern to the text so if I drag that up it's not going to be very easy to see because it was so smaller text and larger font I'll just make that bigger so you can see let's go like 200 probably not the best pattern to show you but you can see how the pattern is on it and it's moving so you can do colored text that way in terms of um, the secondary menu over here you can do vertical type if you like I just right clicked there's paint bucket and the gradient tool the eyedropper tool if you want to extract a color from your design if you want to color match I use that all the time crop tool just left click and drag it in I don't really use that for printables but I do use it for um, making patterns that's a whole other story and then that marquee tool show so I will show you what I meant by that I didn't really explain that earlier so if we click on um, you've got a shape text anything and you want to align it to the center left click and drag you've got to have that dashboard on all sides and then if you click on the move tool and then the center align and then align in the middle it will automatically put it there for you so you don't need to sit there manually trying to work out how much space do I need on the left and the right it will just do it for you which is brilliant one of my all-time favorite tools in Photoshop um, the other thing that you can do, let's say you didn't want that aligned to the center, let's say that you had a printable and see how that snapped, love it, and you had um, like your left and your right side of the page and you only wanted this to align to the right side, you can select an area with the marquee tool, so let's say from here to here, so I only want it to go in the middle of this half of my page, not the whole page. Click on the move tool, click this button here, and then it will move it into the middle for you. You just need to make sure you use the marquee tool and only select the area you want to align it to. So that's pretty much the gist of the tools that I use. I know this was a quick run through, but after you use Photoshop for a while, it becomes super easy. I mean, you're using the same tools again and again and again, like the same thing for making patterns, like you'll use similar tools um, for that. Photoshop is quite easy to use once you know what you're doing and once you know how the tools work. Um, don't get overwhelmed. There's probably going to be a whole bunch of tools you don't use. I never use this. Never use that. Don't really use the eraser. Never use that. Like it doesn't matter if you don't know what all of them mean. Don't get bogged down in that. Just use the tools that you need and just forget that the rest are there. They're just like clutter. Don't get all like panicky. Um, there's heaps of menus and options and things. Just turn on what you need and just ignore the rest and stick to those that you need. And it will make it a lot easier to use. You won't get as overwhelmed. So I hope you found this helpful and I'll include a list of these like shortcuts and tips as well.